I just invested in FHE token and today I'm going to do a video that talks about the MIND network. So we're going to dig into the details of the MIND network launch that has just been listed over on BitGet. We can see the five minute chart here. We're trading at three cents per token right now. And what I've done is I've gathered all of the information together that I could find about the MIND network and I brought it into a Google Notebook LM instance. And then I created an interview style podcast to answer the question that people have been asking on Reddit about this platform. So now I'm going to hand over the rest of the video to the AI to answer the question about what is the mind network and how can investors make money from this. And just before we jump into the presentation, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about this kind of research and what would you like to learn about next? Now let's learn about the Mind Network project, what makes it unique and how investors can make money from it. You know, when you, when you go online, you see that little padlock, mm. HTTPS, supposed to mean secure, right? Secure connection at least. But then you think about Web3, all that public blockchain data or uh, how AI uses our info. Does it really feel private? That's the big question, isn't it? Especially with blockchains being so transparent by design right. and AI's hunger for data. Yeah, privacy concerns are huge. So what if, mm -hmm. what if you could lock the data itself, even while it's being, you know, processed or used? Ah, now you're getting into the really interesting stuff. And that leads us straight into what we're diving into today, Mind Network. Yep. This is basically your shortcut to understanding what they're doing with something called HTTPZ. Think of it like, well, maybe the next HTTPS, but built for Web3 and powered by this tech called Fully Homomorphic Encryption, FHE. Oh, right, heard of it. Sounds complex. It can be, but the core idea is revolutionary. And that's what we're going to unpack. We've gone through uh, my network's videos, panel discussions, articles, the works. Our mission basically is to pull out the essential stuff for you. So you get what FHE is, why it matters for Web3 privacy, for AI, and uh, what my network is actually building. Exactly. You'll understand the potential here without getting lost in the weeds and see what's happening right now in this space. Okay, let's kick things off. Why is something like this even needed? What's the core privacy problem in Web3? Well, like we touched on and like the Phoenix source highlighted, blockchains are mostly public ledgers. Every transaction, it's out there for anyone to see. Great for transparency, not so great for confidentiality. But everyone can see what happened but maybe not who did it sometimes. That's anonymity, right? Right, there's a difference. Anonymity is hiding the who. Some projects work on that, but my network, they're focused on confidentiality, keeping the what secret, the actual data, the inputs, the computation itself. Keeping the details private, even as the transaction itself is recorded somewhere. Precisely. And this need for confidentiality is just getting bigger, especially with things like decentralized AI. How so well, think about training AI models. You want them to be good, right? Mm -hmm. Often that means feeding them lots of data, user data. But people are understandably wary about handing over sensitive info. Exactly. So FHE offers this potential solution. Train the model on the data while it stays encrypted. The model learns, but the sensitive details are never exposed. Okay, that's a big one. Yeah. What else? The Phoenix material mentioned private queries. Yeah, that too. Right now, if you query a blockchain, ask it for specific info that query might be public, someone could see what you're looking for. Ah. FHE could allow you to ask the question privately, get the answer without revealing what you asked. Same for say AI agents talking to each other, they could transact or share info securely without broadcasting sensitive details. It really changes the game for interactions then. It does. Now it's worth saying there are other privacy tools out there, right? ZK yeah. proofs. You don't always proofs, yeah. yeah. Prove something's true without showing the data. Right. And T's trusted execution environments, sort of secure hardware boxes, uh. and MPC, multi-party computation. Yeah. They all have their uses, but also limitations. FHE stands out because it allows for this uh, general computation directly on the encrypted data. It's potentially much broader. Okay, FHE, fully homomorphic encryption. Sounds like the secret sauce here. Let's break it down. In simple terms, what is it? Basically, it's a kind of encryption that lets you do math, uh, perform computations on data while it's still encrypted. Without decrypting it first. Exactly. No decryption needed for the processing step. Think about what that means for security. You can work with sensitive stuff, analyze it, whatever, without ever exposing the raw plain text data. Wow. Okay. That really flips the script on data security. I remember seeing an analogy. 
Was it the Inco source, like an encrypted picture of a cat? Yeah, that's a good one. Imagine the image is encrypted. With FHE, you could still say, increase the brightness or tweak the colors you're manipulating the encrypted data. Okay. Only when you finally decrypt it at the very end do you see the cat picture with the changes applied. The original image was never exposed during the editing. That makes it much clearer. You're working inside the encrypted box. Pretty much. And this isn't just some academic theory. As one of the mind network sources put it, it's a potential game changer for both crypto and AI security and privacy. So where could we actually see this FHE being used? What kind of doors does it open? Well, it enables trust without exposure. Think about gaming maybe proving fair play without revealing player strategies or IoT devices. Internet of things. Yeah, analyzing sensor data for efficiency, but keeping proprietary operational details secret. And AI, we touched on that. Training on private data. Right, training without seeing raw data, protecting the AI model itself, its intellectual property, keeping the algorithm encrypted even while it's running inference. Secure collaboration on data becomes possible in ways it wasn't before. What about other Web3 stuff? Finance, voting? Absolutely. Imagine truly stealth transactions on a blockchain, amounts, parties, all hidden. Or encrypted voting for DAOs, ensuring votes are secret but still verifiable. Healthcare data analysis across institutions without compromising patient privacy. Decentralized science, secure storage. The list goes on. FHE fundamentally enables computation on data that needs to stay private. Okay, so FHE is the enabling tech. Now, mine network. They're described as a leading force here. What's their specific angle? They're not just talking about FHE. They're building with it actively. Their big vision is HTTPZ. The potential HTTPS successor we mentioned. Exactly. As they describe it, it's about creating a fully encrypted Web3. The goal is data protection, not just in transit like HTTPS, but also during computation. So the data stays locked down even when an application is working with it. That's the ambition. It aligns with that broader vision, maybe like Zama also envisions, of a fundamentally more private internet infrastructure. And they're working with Zama using their concrete library. How does that collaboration fit in? Yeah, that's significant. Zama's concrete library aims to make FHE easier for developers to actually use. By using concrete, my network is essentially lowering the barrier to entry for developers wanting to build privacy-preserving apps on their platform. It shows they're focused on practical application. Okay, that brings up Zama again. You mentioned both are looking at FHE for decentralized AI. How are my network and Zama different in their approaches? That's a really good question and an important distinction. While they both see the potential of FHE for AI, their strategies are quite different. How so? My network is really focused on building an entire FHE native infrastructure. They're building their own blockchain called MindChain, yeah. specifically designed from the ground up for FHE computations, especially for AI agents. And they're building an FHE bridge for secure encrypted interoperability with other chains. So my network is like building the whole FHE city, the roads, the buildings, everything. That's a decent analogy. Yeah. They're building the foundational layer. Zama, on the other hand, is more focused on providing the tools like Concrete ML to let developers and data scientists integrate FHE into existing systems or protocols. Uh, so Zama is providing the high-tech FHE tools and materials for builders to use on existing roads or cities. Exactly. They want to make it easy for data scientists to use FHE with their familiar tools without necessarily needing a whole new blockchain underneath empowering existing decentralized AI projects to adopt FHE. Got it. So my network, building the FHE foundation. Yeah. Zama, providing FHE tools for existing foundations. That clarifies things. And my network's FHE consensus. What's that about? Right. Within their mind chain, they're developing new ways for participants, particularly AI agents, to reach agreement consensus using FHE. This means they can validate information and coordinate actions securely without revealing the underlying sensitive data they might be processing. It's pretty core to enabling trustworthy decentralized AI. It's clear this ability to compute securely on encrypted data is, well, potentially huge. Hmm. If you had to boil it down, what's the absolute core benefit for someone listening? Why does this FHE thing really matter? It comes down to control and possibility. It gives individuals and organizations the power to use and get value from sensitive information without the inherent risk of exposing it. It unlocks collaborations and innovations that were previously impossible because the privacy risks were too high. Like using AI without giving up your personal data or companies sharing insights without revealing secrets. Precisely. 
It paves the way for a future where privacy isn't an obstacle, but an enabler. So where does my network stand today? How far along are they in making this happen? Well, they've apparently been focused on productizing FHE for Web3 for almost two years now, which is quite a head start in such a complex area. Okay. They've hit milestones like their FHE data lake, showing they can combine and analyze encrypted data sources. They've also closed a funding round, which shows investor confidence. And importantly, they're currently running their private mainnet. Private mainnet meaning it's live but not fully public yet. Exactly. But the public mainnet launch is expected very soon. That's a huge step towards wider adoption. And there was mention of a token generation event, TGE for the FFHE token. That's when their native token, FFHE, will be officially launched. It'll likely be key for how the network operates and is governed. And development-wise, what are they building right now? They're actively developing Mindchain, the FHE blockchain, and the FHE bridge for interoperability. Plus, they're building out Agentic World, which is their ecosystem specifically for FHE-powered AI agents. Sounds like a lot is happening. If there are developers listening who are intrigued by this FHE stuff and want to build with it, how do they get involved with Mind Network? Good question. Mind Network has put together a developer ecosystem. They've got things called MindX and Mind SDK's software development kits. Tools for building, basically. Right. These give developers the resources to start playing with FHE and building applications on their platform. They also have developer guides available specifically for MindChain and the FHE Bridge to help people get started. So the resources are there if people want to explore building privacy-first apps. Definitely seems that way. And shifting gears slightly for people interested in the token itself, it's tradable somewhere. Yes, the token is listed and tradable on the Bitget exchange. Okay, Bitget. And there was also mention of a special offer. Apparently, users can get a 20% discount on trading fees using a specific referral link. We'll make sure to include that link for anyone interested. Good to know. Oh, and an airdrop happened. Yeah, the source mentioned an airdrop event has already occurred. So if you might have been eligible, maybe check your wallets or accounts associated with their early activities. Okay, so let's try and pull this all together. What are the key things you, the listener, should take away from this deep dive? I'd say first, my network is really at the forefront, pushing FHE out of the lab and into practical use for Web3. Second, their HTTPZ vision aims to fundamentally upgrade internet privacy, encrypting data not just in transit, but also during computation. Which has massive implications for AI, yeah. decentralized finance, everything really. Absolutely. Third, understand their unique approach. Building that full FHE native blockchain, MindChain, which differentiates them from others like Zama, who focus more on tooling for existing systems. And fourth, they're making real progress, mainnet launch coming soon, token generation event, active development. It's not just theory anymore. Exactly. Getting a handle on this now gives you a window into potentially the next evolution of digital privacy and security. The real aha moment, maybe, is thinking about a web where privacy isn't something you hope for, but something that's baked in. Precisely. Where you can use powerful tools like AI and Web3 without that constant nagging worry about data exposure. Which brings us to our final thought for you to ponder. If data privacy becomes a fundamental layer of the internet, built in thanks to tech like FHE, what new things become possible? What kind of innovations, collaborations, or entirely new applications could emerge that we can't even imagine today in our current, more exposed digital world? It's definitely something to think about. We'd encourage you to check out My Network's resources, their website, maybe join their community if you're interested. Explore the possibilities.